Hello. So uh, last week, one of you guys was asking about um, the similarity, if there was any, between bindweed, bindweed, or hedge bindweed, which is the invasive son of a gun that we've got in our soil, and crabgrass, or digitaria, 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 I think crabgrass, the real name for it, or the official name for it, the botanical name for it. Um, was there a similarity? Well, apart from them both being a, a pain in the ass, no. We've got some. I've got some rhizomes to show you. In fact, I'll show you the comparison first. Is a photograph of digitaria or crabgrass. And here is a photograph of bindweed or hedge bindweed. Yeah, bindweed. Convolvulaceae. Convol Convolvulaceae. I think that's the family. Um, but yeah, that's a pain in the bottom as well. You can get like sort of pink flowering versions or white flowering versions, but it just gets everywhere and it, 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 they, they tend to strangle uh, your plants. So bindweed's a common name for it and also uh, morning glory. Morning glory is another name for it, for bindweed. Totally different plants, both pains in the ass. Okay, so I'm continuing on with my big potato bed. Um, and that is a rhizome from the convolvulaceae. As you can see, it's stuck in there, so I'm going to have to dig him out and get him. Similar, similarly, I have done that there with the horse's tails and the bindweed rhizomes. So those rhizomes spread all the way underground and then they pop up. They'll send offshoots up, which pop up and strangle your plants. It's a, it's a vine, it's a creeping vine type of a creature. It's related in some ways, I believe, to sweet potato, but you don't get the tubers off it. Um, but it's nasty stuff, it's horrible. We're trying, to, we're trying as best as we can to eradicate this bindweed problem that we've got here. But I've already forked through, as you saw last week, this entire bed, and this is about a third of the bed now where I'm still pulling out the rhizomes and there'll be loads that I've missed but I'm trying my best really just to keep on top of them and to weaken them by reducing the numbers okay now bear in mind guys that last year this bed this one this particular one which is 15 inches deep by two and a half feet wide by 16 feet long yeah this bed was harvested last year and um we gave it a really good thorough root through in the soil forking using your hands that kind of thing to try and get all the the tubers out but I've, I've just done now probably about six feet by two and a half feet by 15 inches deep and i found these yeah these are ones that were grown last year um now how do you miss them that's bigger than a duck's egg in size. A couple of small ones, obviously, they've just started to sprout, actually. So the, ch the chits are coming through and they're, and they're sprouting through. But how do you miss them? That's just in this space here from, um, from there, from that one, to here. There's a couple more, actually, like rotten ones that we've got in there that I found. But you never catch them all, the potato... He's a sneaky little character, and you never catch all of them. Anywho, there we go. We've got the three seed potatoes in there. You can see the chits with the horns growing on the top. Horns or something like that. But I call them horns because I'm a maverick. Right, there we are. Those will be the uh, roots coming out the bottom and the stems coming out the top as you've probably heard me talk about before. So we're burying those so that they're about 15 inches down below ground level and the spuds will grow up the stems. You can earth them up, make mounds later um, as the horns grow 
and pop through the surface. But they're essentially the stems, and from those stems, uh, little side shoots will come off, and the tubers will grow from those side shoots that come off from the stems. So we should hopefully, we want a full bed. You can see that the spacing is only going to be about 14 to 16 inches apart for the rows. Um, which is pretty close together really for main croppers it's usually around about 20 to 24 but we want this entire bed filled with spuds so that's what we're doing we're doing it this way as the potatoes come through and the top growth covers and it will cover the entire bed eventually in about eight weeks eight to twelve weeks and um, that's what we want we want the entire growth the entire coverage get my thumb out of the way as well while I'm talking to you. So the entire growth, the entire coverage, and then the spuds will grow the tubers in this area. And potentially, we could have a full bed of potatoes. Like I say, I thought I got them all last time, but uh, I missed a couple there, as you can see. Right, so we'll get the mix on. The feed mix, which is the uh, pallet, pelleted chicken manure and bone meal mixed with uh, the compost, five good scoops of compost. That'll do two rows, that as I'll show you now and all we want to do really is cover them with an inch or two of the feed mix and the roots will seek that out because you don't have to feed the stems you have to feed the roots and around the spud and that'll take up the nutrition and that'll be plenty don't need loads and loads and loads and loads lads and lasses you just need enough enough is as good as a feast yeah you can overdo it and as you can see there there's enough to do another one of these rows like two and a half foot rows um so yeah we're going to carry on with, with with that work our way across as i say though when i'm back filling the uh, the trench I'm just doing it gently like this and I'm looking for any rhizomes that might appear which I'm going to stick into there because it's really really invasive bindweed and horse's tail but bindweed is particularly um, horrible stuff don't like it whatsoever bindweed not a fan so as I'm doing it I'm just rooting through and making sure that I haven't missed any rhizomes as we're back filling look like that one but that is stuck in now if i pull that out that is a horse's tail if i pull that out i won't get the entire thing it just snaps off so then still below ground you've got the rhizomes you get clumps like this and they're a right pain in the bum we're just gonna have to be careful and try and get as much out as you can gently pull in and carry on like that okay so I've filled up half that bed with um, the Maris Piper potatoes. Maris Piper, I believe, come from Scotland. So uh, by way of uh, national rivalry, I'm going to do the other half of the bed with uh, these, which are King Edward's potatoes, which are English, I believe. So you've got the King Eddie's as you look up the plot, the King Eddies are going to be on the left-hand side of the big potato grow bed, and all the Maris Piper are going to be on the right-hand side. So on the Scottish side, we've got 24 seed potatoes there on that side, and then I've just started the first row of the King Eddies. There's your heart. The halfway point's about there. It's just, it's just short of that. So actually... The Maris Piper may have a bit of a chance on volume. So there might be 24 there and only 21 of the King Eddies in that side. But we'll do it sort of like for like. We'll take a row out at the end of the season. Take a row out, so the row of the three. Weigh them. And the same with the King Edwards on that side. And we'll see how they get on. But yeah, there's a proud King Edward there. Showing his chits. Sticking his willies up. So I'm in a, uh, a good position really for soil at the moment. That big bed was kind of overfilled because I replenished it last year. If you remember from a previous episode, we dug it all out and, and added in the leaf matter. So all the leaves off the vegetables um, that were left over at the end, the husks, the leaf, that kind of thing. 
we buried under the ground. So we dug out a trench, buried under the ground, and, and, and we were left with big mounds. So we had too much soil really once it had rotted down. And because we're adding in a little bit of compost anyway, when we're adding the feed mix in, there is actually, it's an over stuffed bed that, which is good. So every fourth row, I'm doing this. I'm filling up a 30 litre bucket. Now the reason I'm doing that is twofold. One of the reasons is I've actually started off one of those Maris Piper potatoes in one of those buckets inside Tiki Tunnel 2. I'll show you in a sec. So I've already started that one off from the first four that I dug out. So the first row I dug out, the last trench, the fourth trench, I filled the bucket up with the soil rather than tipping it out and tipping it back, if you like. Should have shown you that really. But trust me, I did it and there's a spud in it. So we're going to do a little bit of an experiment with that. But also, the other two, that one and the other one, which I'll show you. Okay, so this bed is where we grew the huge beetroot last year. Um, we left them in too long, but the, the leaf was still beautiful on them. So I thought, well, I'll leave them. They're not really doing any harm. But we got some gigantic beetroot, like a like foot-long cylindra, which was as, as big as your arm, you know. Um, a, re a really big uh, that Detroit beetroot as well Detroit too anyway that was the bed for it we're going to be doing charding that this year so all that soil that I've just taken out we've got two buckets of there's one up there and there's one there I'm just going to top this off with that if you remember last time as well when I chopped all the leaf from the top of the beetroots I chopped it up finely and I put it on the top I just laid it on the top of, um, of the bed worked it in a little bit and let it rot down it's all rotted down into the soil we had a cover over the top of it and it's all rotted down into the soil been mixed in Bradley mixed it in last week so that's a, a decent bed I'm just going to add that on uh, to the top of it and work it in a little bit and then that's a topped up bed now obviously because we've got it out of the bed at the top that's got a lot of uh, the weed rhizomes in you've just got to be careful to sieve through or sift through on the top as you're applying it so we're applying that to the surface just to top up the bed and I'm just checking for any suspicious looking rhizomes roots and the invasive species that we've got in that top bed there's another western yellow western yellow centipede it's a juvenile one that a little one but it's a western yellow centipede like them right we'll crack on with that there we go a decent tills and a level playing field they've got now those for whatever i decide to plant in there could be onions could be more beets but it's full all right guys and girls that's it for uh, for today the plot's looking better a lot uh, a lot tidier Still work to be done, of course, but uh, you've got to keep on top of it. Right, I've been Guru Mafinda. You've been beautiful, fantastic and fragrant if you're a lady. You've been forthright, virile and masculine if you're a gentleman. And whatever you've been, if you've been in between, you, you're still well loved. Especially by us. So take care of yourselves and each other. I'll see you next time. All right, take care now. Bye-bye. Bradley, give us a thumbs up. He's just weeded that bed, and I'm weeding this one. Look at the state of it.